drink cinema. Jeez. Welcome to another episode of Two Drink Cinema. We are two brothers reviewing movies two drinks at a time. Hello, Brett. Hello, Lee. Oh, you've got that on for Sally Field. Because she's in this movie. Yeah, Forrest okay. Gump, for those that can't Forrest see. Forrest Gump on the uh, um, YouTube. People will see. I've got Back to the Future on because why not? Because they go back in time. They do. It's set in the past. It, they, it's set... It's set in 2017, 2017. The distant past. But they also go 16 years before that. Yeah, to, to 2000. When she had L cancer. Maths. One. Uh, we are doing 80 for Brady. Apologies to anyone who is expecting something else based on the trivia at the end of last episode. But yeah. 80 for Brady is new and we went to see it at the cinema. Yeah. And so we are reviewing it on the podcast. So let's do a six degrees from who framed Roger Rabbit right. to 80 for Brady. Right. Oh, okay. easy. What? Bob Hoskins was in Hook with Robin Williams. Yeah. Who was in Mrs. Doubtfire with Sally Field. Oh, well, easy. Done. Continue. Okay. Oh, that's why. That I'm was almost as got... easily written as the movie itself. Look, it's a pretty basic movie. Yes, it is. But really, it's just a chance for four funny women to be funny. Yeah. Which is Look, fine. I wasn't expecting, you know, Oscar winning performances. Yeah, no one's winning an Oscar. Um, Unless they put in best cameo by a sports star, because Tom Brady was actually good. It's actually the end. pretty good. Anyway, we got a drink. We do have a drink that failed. Yeah, yeah. Um, Much like the Atlanta Falcons in the 2017 <laughs> uh, Super Bowl, it started off well, but then it went to become a mess. Um, talk us through this very dark purple <sighs> concoction. It was meant to be red, white, and blue for the Patriots. Yeah, but then it just mixed. Okay, so now... So, it's-, it's just got grenadine, blue curacao, and vodka and lemonade. Okay. So, it's... So no- nothing wrong with those ingredients. No, it cheers. It, I think I already know what it's going to taste like. Oh, Vodka. Yep. The grenadine <laughs> is strong. Yep. Grenadine is just... Just fucking invades everything. Just alcoholic raspberry, and it's a bit too. I much. thought you were going to say alcoholic Russia. Then, <laughs> fuck. Um, meh. Yeah. Two. Two. Look, Middle... it tastes nice. It's very easy to drink. It's probably almost too sweet. Middle of the road, for me. It is a little bit too raspberry, for me. But that is grenadine. It's interesting because it's the same amount of that and blue karakarak. Yeah, but grenadine is a stronger flavour. Yeah. It's a syrup. Than blue. Yeah, so there we go. So, yeah, it was meant to um, thing, but it didn't. We definitely don't have luck with layers. No. Again, if you're a mixologist, get in touch. What we've worked out is try and avoid ones that are layered and anything with dairy. Yep. Yep. Good. Back on yeah. to the movie. Uh, no cocktails in the movie. No doubt Lily Tomlin no. was on a cocktail of drugs when she was getting treated for the cancer. She was, and she, then she needed a... Oh, no, that was Rita Moreno. She, she needed, needed blood, blood pressure, pressure and her sleeping and pills. sleeping tablets, yeah. Oh, she mixed them up. <laughs> oh, I didn't see that coming. No. Nah. <laughs> I even funny, turned though. to you in the cinema, didn't I? And I went, she's going to be asleep. Because <laughs> um, you can just tell the way they shoot it, you know. Well, no, and you can tell because the scene before, the guy says... Do not get these mixed up. Yep. And then she just pops one and then it zooms in on the other guy that's in love with her uh, and then she's knocked out. You know what the some of the like the scenes and the writing was like? Like, like sitcom. Yeah, sitcom. Yep. It was like Grace and Frankie had two other friends. Yeah. Uh, and they went to the Super Bowl. And they went to the Super Bowl. Because basically... Oh, no, they're they're different characters than Grace and Frankie. But yeah, but it was that kind not, of yeah. vibe. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Um, so if you haven't seen it, uh, go and see it. There will be spoilers, I guess. Yeah, there will be spoilers. Well, the Super Bowl, the Patriots win. Yeah. But, you know. 
you kind of already knew that, I, particularly if you're American, I'm sure. Yeah, and I think that it's like there are spoilers, but also it's very predictable. So it's not like there was anything shocking in the movie. There's just one bit right at the end. Yeah. Yeah. Which I would have maybe done differently. I don't know. Yeah, we'll get to that. But if you haven't seen it, uh, we recommend seeing it overall. Mm. It is funny. It's funny. I laughed. Uh, and it is another feather in the cap for Jane Fonda and Lily Tomlin to prove old people can still act. Yeah. And not surprisingly, one of the trailers for the movie was another movie with Jane Fonda in it. Oh, yeah. Book Club Part Produced two. by Jane Fonda. Yeah. Starring Jane Fonda. And Candace Bergen and... Mary Steenburgen. Oh, yeah. Mary Steenburgen. And, and... It's not Lily Tomlin in that one, is it? Diane Keaton. Yes, she's old. So I, I think in the trailer I said, can you sub out Diane Keaton for Lily Tomlin? I'd watch that. <laughs> I don't know how I feel about Candace Bergen in it. I think she'd be good. Like, she's funny. Yeah, Candace I haven't Bergen. seen Book Club 1. Oh, I, I wonder if you need to. I doubt it. <laughs> I'm, you know what sequel of women I'm definitely not going to see? Hocus Pocus 3. And just like that. Oh, fuck that, no. Sex and the City sequel, where no. there's not even four of them? It's it's a touchy subject. Yeah. Mm. All right. <coughs> All right. So, the movie starts with the four of them getting together to watch... The game that qualifies the Patriots to get into the Super Bowl in 2017. Yeah. The playoffs. Yes. And it, I think that seems very good at setting up the friendship... I think it sets up the friendship of what their friendship is now. But I would have liked to have known a bit like, why are they friends? How they met? Yeah. Yeah, because this is how they all do seem pretty different. Because Lily Tomlin and Jane Fonda were friends. And then they needed some diversity. So they made friends with Rena Moreno. Right. And Sally Field is there. And then they needed someone slightly younger. So Sally Field is there. Yeah, because it doesn't like... Sally Field was looking for any opportunity to escape her husband and so just picked three just women picked to be three women. <laughs> just walked through the house and they were all sitting around and go, can I join in, please? Can I join in? I've brought chips. Yeah. I uh, brought guac. They are very different characters and I feel that's a bit, that's a bit sitcom as well. Yeah, like you're the... You're the funny one. You're the smart one. You're, you're the, the slutty one. one. You're Lily Tomlin. Yeah, you're the boss one. Yeah, yeah. I f- that's you're very Chandler. Sick. You're Phoebe. You're Rachel. Maybe they lived and across apartments from each other. <laughs> Maybe thirty years ago. Maybe they did. Did they say they were friends for a long time, or they were just good friends? Well, they were already like. It's like I had cancer, and my three best friends got me yeah, through. True. So they'd already known each other for a while. Yeah. The other thing that that opening scene does is set up that it's not going to be a very deep and thoughtful movie. Even though there's cancer. Yeah, even though there's cancer. We know it's just it? going to be yeah. jokes. Um, but it's a funny, it was funny and it's like, you were on the ladder, changing the light, do yeah. whatever. And then Sally Field's like, you know, the statistics say this is not going to make any difference. Yeah. And it's like, I spilled the tea. And then she spills, and then one of the things was I spilled the chips as it was kicking off. Yeah, yeah. So it's like it's kick off, and she just runs in and flips the chips, smashes the chips which over. Which is funny. And Jane Fonda gets annoyed every time that she doesn't get to actually see the kick off. Yeah. Um, it's good. Yeah, setting up each individual character and then their friendship, and reasonably quickly, they end up going to the Super Bowl. Yeah, like uh, two weeks. Yeah. Yeah. We get some funny scenes. Like when Rita Moreno is enlisting everyone else in the retirement village to call up yes. the story. Yeah. <laughs> and one, the one, one that the... goes, oh, um, my, the one that says it badly. The one that's just like. It cuts off too soon. My friends are dying. We want to go to the Super Bowl or something like yeah. that. My, we want to go to the Super Bowl really badly because my friends are dying. Yeah. Dying to go to the Super Bowl. Yeah. Yeah. And that's when we meet, uh, what's his name? Mickey. Mickey. That's in love with Rita Moreno. Yeah. Before that, though, when um, they talk about divorce and then Rita Moreno cries, like, and then she goes, oh, it just makes me think of Frank. 
Um, and she goes, you did, Frank's didn't divorce you. He died. Yeah. <laughs> She's like, it's the same thing. Um, yeah. Then we get uh, Super Bowl tickets, which they win from a competition. Those guys that have the podcast, I wasn't yeah. convinced. Well, that they have a real podcast or? Well, well, I don't know. I don't think they have a real podcast, but I wasn't convinced whether or not they were meant to be playing Bostonians or in the context of the movie, their characters was taking the piss out of Bostonian accents. They were definitely meant to be Bostonian. Yeah. Whether it was just meant to be like, Tom Brady. I don't know how to, what's. How do you... The pack. The pack, yeah. You go to the pack. Just think of Harvard. Ted. Think of Ted. Yeah, right? I'm trying to think <laughs> of Mark Wahlberg. There's a... um, I saw a sketch that came up on my Facebook ages ago of Tom Brady um, in a sporting goods store in LA. Yes. And the guy that's serving him is like, oh, you're Tom Brady from the Patriots. And then he oh. like talks to him in a Boston accent. Yeah. And Tom's like... I'm not from Boston. Like, yeah. I just played in New England. Yeah. Oh, yeah, sure. Tom Brady. Yeah, I'll go to the park. <laughs> go to the park. It's like, I don't go to the like pants. But the guy's like, say park. And he says park normally, yeah. LA accent or wherever he's from. He goes, oh, that's great. Park, park. <laughs> it's funny. It's I'll, uh, I'll try and find it and share it on the socials at Two Drink Cinema. The movie really just goes through... Putting old people in funny situations. Yeah. Mixing up your meds. That's what old people do. Yes. Rita Having Moreno wigs. falls asleep. Having wigs. That's yes. what old people do. Trying to stay beautiful. That's what Jane Fonda's doing and her character. Yep. That's not a dig at Jane Fonda. She's great. Accidentally getting high. Oh, that's what old people do. Yeah. They were funny when they were high though. Random. I mm. remember we were watching the credits. Yeah. And it was like, Guy Fieri. Yeah, what we both fuck? looked at each other or something like, Guy Fieri? Yeah. You also like Billy Porter? Yeah, I didn't know he was in it. <laughs> yeah. Because all the all the cast was was the four of them and Tom, and Tom Brady. Brady. Yeah. Yeah. Um, Guy Fieri's extended cameo uh, was good. Yeah. And that whole scene, Sally Field doing the hot sauce challenge mm. was funny. But then at the end, she's like, unless it's got extreme flavor, I can't really taste it at this <laughs> age. <laughs> And then obviously she loses the tickets. The, the funniest thing was that with the other people in the spicy thing, and one guy just chucked milk in his eye. Like it was just no, like because what he did was he ate it and then rubbed his eye. Yeah, yeah. And then obviously he got hot sauce in his eye, so to pour milk onto his eyeball. The other thing that was a little bit annoying was of how how they were pronouncing Fieri. It wasn't Guy oh, yeah. Fieri. It was. Well, Mr. Fieri. They're also not from Melbourne. Mr. Fieri. <laughs> so they don't say. Mr. Fieri, where are you? Guy Fieri. Guy Fieri, where are you? Where yeah. are you? No, I can't do it. Yeah. Yeah. How do you say Fieri in a Boston accent? I don't know. Fieri. 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 You know, so the, <laughs> speaking of accents, occasionally Lily Tomlin would say one word in a Boston accent. Yeah. Did you? Like just one word occasionally. Oh, okay. Maybe she we got a goal. New I England. Some, I'm going to stop doing point. the fucking Boston accent now. Um, yeah, they get accidentally high, they get lost, they go to a party. split up from each other, they end up at a party, um, Jane Fonda pashes the ex-footballer. Of course. I it, When they lost the tickets, I, I don't want to like ruin the movie, when they lost the tickets, wouldn't you just go straight back in and talk to the guy who's won two Super Bowls? You know what? <laughs> yeah. yeah. But... They then had- you have to get a funny scene with um, Rita Moreno talking to a scalper. Yeah, and you miss the funny scene of her trying to win the money in the poker game to yeah. try and buy tickets. Yeah. But then she's like, oh, shit, it's char- it's charity. <laughs> and he goes, fucking charity on the way out. <laughs> but then they helped Grogu get the charity. Grogu. And-, <laughs> and Baby Yoda won the charity for <laughs> fucking... <laughs> Broadway cares. Broadway cares. And Billy Porter was there playing Billy Porter, but with a different name. Yeah. Really? <laughs> I, I, I didn't get that. In the, Like, because in the credits, it's like Guy Fieri as himself. Yeah. Retta herself. Yeah. But then like Pat Oswalt as Brisket. Not as yeah. Pat Oswalt. Not as Pat, <laughs> even though it was just Pat Oswalt. It was very clearly Pat yeah. Oswalt. It was very clearly Billy Porter because they were choreographing the halftime show. 
Yes. I did find it funny, though, when they were, she was a bit high and everybody was Guy Fieri. Yeah. Fieri, please. Fier- Fieri. <laughs> Sorry. Rita Moreno can say it like that. Yeah. Because she's got that kind of accent. Yeah. Guy Fieri. I also da, liked da, 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 da. Sally being a mum to that guy. And she tried the negging yeah. thing. And yeah. she found like the little one tooth that was thing. Yeah. And then he tried to pass her. <laughs> She's like, no, no, not me. And then it's like, what are you doing? He's like, I don't know. What I don't I'm even doing. know. I don't know. I tried to pass my grandma. They would not have gotten into the Super Bowl. Yeah. Yeah. It's all like very much <laughs> grain of salt. Yeah. And then like. But, it, but that was kind of funny when they were doing the dance. Okay, what, what moves do you know? I was expecting one of them to be like the Charleston. Yeah, I thought I was expecting a Charleston in there. But the twist, the shimmy, um, the t- and the toe step. Yeah. Like I, the side stepping yeah, one or whatever. Yeah. And then they just put that in. And the guy was like, I know you're not your dancers, but in you go. Yeah. Great. Not, not going to happen. In. Also, what's not going to happen, and another oh, grain of salt. We'll, we'll go. Oh, there are four empty seats. Yeah, yeah, not going to happen. <laughs> there are four empty seats together. Would not happen, but we've got to let the story go through. Yeah, but Chip, the security guard, oh, he was funny. He had a chip not on, on his, my watch. He had a chip on his shoulder uh, at these women. And also on his lapel. Uh, That's where his name tag was. Their lapels, aren't well, they? Well, I don't know. It was on his oh, shirt. No, yeah, on Whatever. his shirt. His yeah. pocket. I fucking know. You ruined my joke. But One other th- running thing through the movie is that Lily Tomlin uh, and Roseanne's daughter are talking about ringing the doctor. Yeah. She's also Lily Tomlin's daughter. Yeah. But she'll always be Roseanne's daughter to me. Um, yeah. Having to call the doctor, which makes us always think she's still dying of the cancer. Yeah. And, but also, and also the makes, twist of the whole, like, they didn't actually win the tickets. Yeah, yeah. And because she thought she was dying of the cancer still. Yeah, so, she's so like, she spent just doing it. all of her money. Yeah. Rita Moreno, gambling addict, wins them their gold watch at the end of it all, though. Yeah. To pay right. back. And wins them. That, that scene where they're at the NFL experience. And oh, Lily yeah, Tomlin's yeah. doing the and they're betting the quarterback throw or whatever yep. it is. It's so funny. But she's just and like she's just like whoosh, and this guy's like full throws. pelting it. Yeah, because she got spoken to by the spirit of Tom Brady. Luella. Yeah, and Rita Moreno's run this whole book on her. And yeah. the guy's like, We're not meant to bet, but they don't pay me enough. And then it's just and it's just another game, it's just like jerseys everywhere. Yep, yep. She just won everything. Luella. That was funny. It was funny. It is a funny movie, but it's just like scenes together yeah. with a story over the top. What I will say sometimes that I found a bit strange was like there'd be a scene, they're all like four, four, four of them walk into like the NFL experience, yeah. say, and then they're all walking and then all of a sudden it's like Rena Marino just goes off. And then it's just the three of them. She just, <laughs> just has like, her own sketch Rena somewhere Marino's else. just like, I don't need to be in the rest of this scene. I'm going, I'm going. <laughs> sorry. No, she had her own sketch to go off and do. You know what else was funny? What? Gronk fan fiction. Oh, yeah. Gronk erotica. Gronk erotica. Between and a gronk and a hard place. A very gronky Christmas. Is that the other one? <laughs> I think so, yeah. And then they get to the NFL experience and the woman is selling her books. And she's yeah. like, no, that's me. Yeah. And then she ends up doing a reading. And that's how we meet the old dude. Oh, yeah. Harry Hamlin. Because he's a fan. And then at the end, Gronk has the book, of course. Of course. He's hilarious. like, I take it everywhere with me. I was, at one point, I was like, she's going to meet Gronk, surely. I was like, they have to do something in here. And then that she does. I'm like, thank God. I think I saw her meet Gronk in the trailer. Oh, okay. Yeah. Right. Um, but you do think that, you know, when she's writing Gronk erotica. Um, so, which is definitely a horny point. Which but definitely is real. The Somebody has done that. Oh, for sure. The rest of the horny points are like old lady horny. Like, oh, there's Tom yeah. Brady. Oh, he's such a handsome man. Yeah, and um, <laughs> Rita Moreno just stealing the cardboard cutout. Yeah, I think like one a day. Because by the end of the movie, they got six in there. When their they room. got back from the party, I thought it was hilarious. There was like six of them there. Yeah. She's like, oh, he's, yeah, I'm taking this one. He's cute. But then Lily Tom was like, come on, which one? Which one did you pick? Like, making sure she got a good one. <laughs> uh, funny, horny old ladies. The the way they cut the 
game into the film was very good. When they eventually yeah, get to the when game, they eventually get to it, and yeah. then into the skybox. Yep. Uh, the way, yeah, the way they cut it into the game is very good. Um, I think as well the, the other running thing that I don't know if we needed, but I think it did help her character a bit was the whole st- stuff with like Sally Field's husband being a fucking dumbass. Sorry. I think, like to be put it that bluntly, but I think like, each of the four of them needed a reason to let loose. Yeah, or, or like Rita Moreno was like, "I've got to get over my dead husband." Lily yeah, Tomlin okay. was like, "I'm dying." Jane Fonda's like Jane Fonda was like, "No, I'm going to go and be with my friends yeah. and not hook up with guys." That yeah. was her reason for going. And then Sally Field was like, "I've just fucking had enough. He's such a yeah, dependent. I need dumbass. to live my own life. Yeah, write your own book, <clears throat> dickhead." Or whatever he was doing. Exactly. He was writing some research paper. The ex-head of NBC. That's where he was from. (laughs) Fucking hell. From Seinfeld. Yeah. Yes. I was like, I've seen him. And I was like, is he in Brothers and Sisters? Is he Sally Field's brother in Brothers and Sisters? That'd be weird. That's weird that now they're married. Yeah. Speaking of weird. Thank God. um, Rose Byrne and Seth Rogen, right? Yep. Married, Someone's been Apple watching something on yeah. Apple TV. Married couple in Bad Neighbours 1 and 2. Yeah. Suddenly in this show, platonic. Yeah, where I think that a like very why? gay guy is Rose Byrne's actual husband or something. I yeah. saw a bit of the trailer like, before what, I watched. I get that, like, you know, Rose Byrne and Seth Rogen, they have this good rapport and they might want to work together and blah, blah, blah. But, like, you've been in two big movies... Yep. Where you've played husband and wife. Don't try to then convince us that you're not attracted to each other in this platonic show. Oh, I'm glad you put platonic in quote. Oh, I don't have, come I on. I haven't watched a minute of the show, and I know the show is going to be these people are trying to be platonic, but then they end up rooting. Yeah. Yeah. And then it's knocked up. Yeah. Then it's Bad Neighbours. Then it's Pineapple Express. It's the Bad Neighbours cinematic universe. Yeah. And then for some reason, James Franco is there. Yeah. Oh, they don't even think they're friends anymore. Also, Rose Byrne, what are you doing? You what? could do better than that. A lot of people can do better than that, but maybe she likes it. Rose maybe Byrne. she went back because Seth Rogen's now friends with Steven Spielberg. <gasps> oh, she's trying to get into the Spielberg Spielberg first. cinematic universe. She she's was- going to be Marion Crane in like a prequel to Indiana Jones. <gasps> Why is that not a show yet? Like Young a Marion Crane origin oh, okay, story. Right. Is that her name, Marion Crane? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Why is that not a story yet? They'll do a short round story at some point now that they he's will, back on the now scene. Now that he's back and he's an Oscar winner. Um, also, Harrison Ford, Jason Siegel shrinking, don't bother watching it. Okay, good. On Apple good TV+. Snap. Plus. But apparently it's going to get a shite load of Emmy nominations. One, That's the prediction. Once um, Ted Lasso's done, I think I'm done with Apple TV+. Plus. I got nothing else to watch on there. I was about to cancel it, and then you reminded me there was more Ted Lasso coming. I cancelled it, and then when I was like, "Oh, Ted Lasso's back," I got it back. <laughs> um, even though this season is not as good as the others, but we'll save that for another chat. But we're still going to get to the end. It's like Succession. It's a shit show. It annoys the crap out of me. It's so overrated. But I just want to see how it ends. Or is it like Grey's Anatomy? You've committed twenty years to it, so you got to finish it. Oh, I just want to get up to the point where she leaves, and work, then they work out what the fuck they're going to do. You know she was. She's not the highest paid person on that show. She wasn't for sure a long she time. Was. No, for a long time, McDreamy was getting paid more than her. Oh, that's why. And she was like, "I'm, off. I'm fucking grey." Yeah, like, there's no grey's anatomy without fucking grey. Lip, this body is the anatomy of grey. Yes, like that's this what I'm is grey's anatomy. Yeah, uh, but women in Hollywood. Speaking of women in Hollywood, these four are doing well. She'll never work again. Ellen Pompeo. Like, why Why would you? You'd, you'd be rich. I saw a meme but the But also, other day. like, yeah, yeah. Um, you know, it's like you will always now be Meredith Grey yeah. because we didn't know who you were before the show started. Then you played that character for fucking 20 years. The only other thing I've seen her in is Catch Me If You Can. And that was, a, like, oh. basically a cameo. She was one of the girls that Leo hooked up with on the plane or something. Oh, really? And that was it. Yeah. Yeah. Um, 
We're back in the skybox. Yeah, great. Um, We're back in the movie. Super Bowl 51. And uh, Sally Field, actually, they get across and get snuck into a tactic office. Yep. The tactics box. And we've, up until now, built up that Sally Field knows the stats. Yep. She knows stats. It's all about maths. So that's how, between Sally's and stats and uh, Luella's inspirational speech... That's how they yeah. win, Super Bowl 51. Sally Field and Lily Tomlin, <clears throat> greatest NFL coaches of all time. Yep. Fuck off, Bill Belichick. The inspirational in the middle of the third quarter speech. Yep. And the stats. When they had that moment and she was talking to him in the headset thing and he was just sitting there holding the helmet. Holding the awkward. whole helmet next to his yeah. head. Um, and he was just looking and it was just like this blank stare. Yeah, because he's a footballer. And I was like... <laughs> Oh, his acting is going to be terrible. No. Like, but with words, he was okay. The the little cameos, whenever he'd pop up on a screen or something, yeah. they weren't great. No. But I think that was deliberate. Yeah. Because it was like her kind of fantasy. When his little bobblehead spoke, that was funny yeah. at the start. Uh, yeah, then they won. Spoiler alert. Yeah. The won. Patriots won, thanks to the four ladies. And then they get also, found by Chip again. Also. Mm. You know, it was like he didn't have any old... Andy Richter didn't have any cash, so he's a Rolex. Yeah. You're telling me that Rolex is worth as much money as you want? No. No, I think that's a down down payment. That's a down payment. Fucking better be a down payment. No, I think Rita Moreno said that. She said, I can help with that. I made a bet with the man and he didn't have enough cash, so he gave me this until then. Oh, okay. I think she said that. Maybe I missed that. Andy Richter, fucking hell. I don't think Rita Moreno would let you get away with not paying up on your debts. Oh, no, she'll get you. She'll get you. She knows some New York thugs. She Rita knows Moreno. some thugs when she was in Oz. The TV show Oz? Yeah, she was She was like a nun therapist woman in Oz. Oh, so she knows prison people. She knows prison people. And she knows New York youth gangs. She knows Christopher Melanie. Who is in uh, Law and Order SVU? Oh yeah, yeah. So you go. So he'll she know how to the New York Police. He'll know how to hide the body. There you go. Done. Yep. And then he'll she'll get um, Bernardo to shank you. Or did Bernardo die? Bernardo died. Okay. <laughs> Rico, what's the one that's meant to marry Maria? Chico. Chico. Oh God. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. That's... <laughs> That seems racist. It is, but that is his name. <laughs> that is his name. I didn't just call him. We're not eating Chico Ollies. Chico rolls. That's, that's his name. Um, Chico. I did like that they slipped the joke in about him losing his jersey because he did actually lose his jersey that year. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, that was funny. They're like, "Oh, let's do a jersey swap." Also, and he's like, "I don't have anything with these kind of sequins." They end up in the. Um, so we went and saw this with Mum. Yeah. Who is like the Lily Tomlin of the AFL? To the point where at the end of the game, then Chip, they're all like, oh, you're getting arrested. But then they go to the, obviously, go to the rooms yes. where it's very tame in there. Fully dressed. Everyone's fully dressed and it's quite tame. Yeah. No no Gatorade showers. Um, and then mum was like, oh, I'd like to do that. <laughs> the other thing in that scene I didn't quite get. It's like, hi, Tom. That was it. Yeah. It was like, oh, my God, Tom Brady. I would have been like, I would have been like that. And I didn't fucking like Tom Brady. Jane Fonda was a bit stumped to meet Gronk, though. That was hilarious. Yep. You're so big. I take this book everywhere I go. <laughs> but Rita Moreno just walked up and she was like, I want to shave you. That was weird. <laughs> <laughs> and then. And he was like, yes. Sally Fields one was funny when it's just like. You're the best conversion or the something target, yeah, this whatever. Number, number. You're you're underappreciated. And he was like, "That is so nice to hear." <laughs> she's like, "Nobody's ever told you that." He's like, "No, yeah, but she's got the stats." And then, yeah, so then they flip forward to, to 2020, 2020 when he'd started. Then playing with the, I feel like that was an illegal Buffalo, gathering. Buffalo Bills. Tampa Bay Buccaneers. Tampa Bay Buccaneers. I feel like that was an illegal gathering. Surely you couldn't have six people in a house in 2020 watching the, the well, football. Well, the Super Bowl uh-huh. in 20... If it was the 2020 Super Bowl, it would have been like February. Oh, that's true. That's true. Unless it was the start of the 
season in 2020, then it would have been late 2020. Maybe because in America, you know, they had bubbles. Yeah. They also, in some states, were just like, don't fucking care. And also probably, surely, like, Jane Fonda moved in with Lily Tomlin. Oh, I thought you were going to say, surely all four of them are high risk of getting COVID. Yeah, well, yeah. Like, <laughs> but also she, the daughter was just there. Lily Tomlin is definitely immunocompromised. She should not be having people in her house oh, yeah, in no, 2020. No. The anyway. da- and then the daughter was just there. Yeah, I think was that, that was... to sh- think that she was like there instead of Lily Tomlin? Yes. Yes, yeah. that was the point. Um, and we were meant to, obviously, Rita Moreno's happy because... She's hooking up with Mickey. And then we're like, oh, yeah, the oh, daughter's he was there. there as well, wasn't he? Yeah. Yeah, I forgot that. So the I'm daughter's sorry. there because we're meant to think that Lily Tomlin has died from the cancer. That's Harry Hamlin. The football player. Yeah. They didn't get together. The smallest football player that's ever existed. Yeah. It's olden days. In yeah. the 80s, football players were smaller. Okay, sure. Um, the Yeah, you're meant to think that Lily Tomlin has died from the cancer. Yes, you are. And then they're like, Mum, where's Mum? Oh, she's here. Oh, she's okay. I was getting the chips. And then she walks back and goes, chips. Ah. Do you think she should have died? I think, well, part of me was like, maybe she should have died. But then part of me is like, no, that's not what the movie is. That would have just been like downer. Yes and no. It would have been downer, but it also would have been, oh, she got her last thing. Yeah. And then her chair's there, and her chair should have had Tom Brady's actual Super Bowl winning jersey on it, and no one sits in it. Yep. Yep. That's why it stayed the Patriots, and everything else was the Buccaneers. Except Jane Fonda's, I think, was half Buccaneers, half Patriots. Oh, right. Okay. Because I think they sold them, because, like, I think they were, yeah. new, they were Tom Brady fans. Well, like yesterday, I was watching a basketball game. Don't ask me why. It was the Golden State Warriors and the uh, LA Lakers. Oh, yeah. LeBron, LeBron played like shit. Rivalry. Um, and they were like, oh, people were watching him like, oh, who do you go for? And she was like, the Lakers. And other guy was watching and he go, who do you go for? He goes, LeBron James. <laughs> That's fair. <laughs> That's like our cousin. Her dad goes for Melbourne and her mum goes for Richmond, but she goes for Buddy Franklin. Yep. So she ended up going for Hawthorne. Yep. And that's why I'm a Giants supporter now. No, I didn't say that. Mum's not listening by this point, so that's fine. Um, that's an in-joke. Somebody will work that out. Whatever. Hang on. This is... Oh, no. It's okay now. Jeez, I can't work out what this is going on with this freaking microphone. Yeah, so the ending was like, oh, they're all happy and yay. Yeah, and there's guacamole, and Mickey's been well-trained by Rita Moreno how to make the guac, and then everyone's happy. Including yeah. Tom Brady, who gets to sit on a beach with four old ladies. And then they make a joke about him retiring. Ha, 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 ha. Oh, yeah. Because none of them have really retired. Well, no, they're all still making movies. Yeah. Sally Field is like, I took a sabbatical and never went back to work. Yeah. Because she had to proof her to dumb husband's texts. I think Rita Moreno is working more now than she was 10 years ago. Probably. Probably. Lily Tomlin definitely is. Oh, Lily Tomlin. This is our second Lily Tomlin. Yeah. After big business. Um, second okay. Sally Field after Mrs. Doubtfire. Yep. A second Rita Moreno after West Side Story. Yep. A first Tom Brady film. First Tom Brady. Ever. First yeah. Guy Fieri. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Have we done another Lily? Oh, uh, not Lily. Jane Fonda? No. Nah. No. There you go. We will be doing another Sally Field one at some yeah. point. Our first Billy Porter. <laughs> probably his first it's fucking movie. Short list. All right. Um, that's it. That's the movie. Strangely enough, our fourth Patton Oswalt movie. No, that's just... <laughs> And the sixth film that's had Retta as a cameo. <laughs> no, it's not. It's not actually. Um... Look, over. yeah, I think it was good. It was nice. It was fun. You, you don't go in there expecting the world. You're fine. No, if you go in expecting four women to be funny, you're going to be fine. Mm-hmm. Uh-huh. That's what we think. Should we find out what the internet thinks? I think we should. Okay, I've got a five star from Deb. Hi. <laughs> she introduced Hi, Deb. Hi. I am a 60 plus for Brady and loved this movie. <laughs> you do not have to be a football fan to laugh out loud and cry a bit. The four ladies will bring out those two emotions in an absolutely fun movie. 
The script was well written, and the actually footage of the Super Bowl game adds credit and involvement to the film. Well done, Tom Brady. What is involvement? The mean? cameos were true and not stuck in as some cameos can, can be in other not so hilarious movies. When was the last time you walked out of a theatre feeling great with your face aching from laughing out loud and streaked with tears? Go see it. This film deserves every star. I can't remember the last time I walked out of a theatre going, oh, I really want to watch Outrageous Fortune now. Because that's what I felt at times. <laughs> All right. Okay. I will say I looked. I was looking up. There were plenty of one stars. Yeah, it's only got a three point six on um, Google. Um, I will say that a lot of them just seem to be people that hate either Tom Brady or the Patriots or both. I was chatting to my friend the, the other great day. The Great Deflator was used maybe in this review or something. It was like, I'm like fucking shut up, people. I was chatting to my friend the other day, and we talk in Australia about tall poppy syndrome. Yeah, but I think the Americans are worse. Americans are dumb. American sports fans. <laughs> I'm on record now. You're on record. Um, I told a random in the street last night that I think Americans are dumb. Well, he told us that everybody's racist, yeah. so... That was fun. Do you Go know out. what the problem with... Oh, no, we're not getting into it. And the problem with um, just three countries, America, England, and Australia, yeah. everyone's racist. Yeah. It's like, okay. Because they all have their money in Swedish bank accounts, so China can't get to it. <laughs> I'm pretty sure that's what he said while telling other people that they're racist. But then also... But um, it wasn't against us. Told Just all me, Australians. To also told us we look poor. <laughs> yeah, we're not the elite. We're not the elite. I could be. I could be. I was wearing runners, but I whatever. A de I was double denning and dem um, dem deming. Anyway, -deming. Uh, the Americans don't like successful sports people. One star review of One star, Brady for Brady. Um, And terrible comedy that wastes its cast on an unfunny and poorly written script that goes to almost worship more <laughs> of for Tom Brady. Also, Mark Hamlin's character, that's not his name, is not a football player. Yeah, he's an actor. Maybe a team coach or owner, but not a football player. Also, this feels like if Adam Sandler's son was approached by Brady slash NFL to write a commercial for them, but when it ran too long, they just said, make it a movie, we don't care how bad, and put Guy Fieri in there for good measure. Also, the two end scenes here are so Brady pandering that they kill an already dead on arrival movie. This should have ended with Brady sitting in a chair asking the audience to vote whether he should retire or not with promo codes everywhere, Who and then everyone would have voted. Overall, a skippable and disappointing film. I don't know. If you go to a movie where a guy's name is in the title... <laughs> And he's a producer of it. I don't think you should be disappointed that it's about liking that guy in the title. It's also based on a true story. So. Yeah. I want to know the true story because I don't feel like getting high at the Super Bowl party is part of the true story. All, based on a true story is four old ladies went to the Super Bowl. Wrote a letter to Tom Brady and it inspired him. Yep. And Tom Brady met them. Maybe. Yeah. Maybe. Not on a beach. All right, five stars from Karen, which is unexpected. My husband and I saw this movie on 8th to 23. It was fabulously fun and funny. I plan to see it again with my neighbour. The entire cast performed beautifully. Beautifully. I applauded at the end of the movie. Oh, God. If you are of the age Fucking that you Karen. recognise these women, it is a must see. <laughs> Fonda and Tomlin were also fantastic in Frankie and Grace. We went to the Orinda Theatre, which is fantastic. We had free popcorn, and since it was happy hour, we bought a glass of wine Ooh, and were Karen. given the second glass free. Ooh. What's better than a great movie, free popcorn, and two glasses of wine for the price of one? The two men behind the counter were very friendly, and we sat there in the lobby sipping our wine and chatting away with oh, them. Oh, God. A great way to spend the afternoon. <laughs> <laughs> Talks more about the wine than the movie. Yep. That's oh. an old lady review. Of it. All right. Jack might be of a different generation. Awful. Then five, like eight dots for some reason. 
Unless you enjoy very poor acting, seeing a movie that includes nearly every obvious cliche imaginable, poor quality script, giddy girl acting, and women capable of much greater roles in acting having involved themselves in a very standard movie that at best is at the junior high or early high school play performance level that even high school parents might not want to see their child in, would have found fingernail scratching a high school blackboard more entertaining. I love this very specifically, a high school blackboard. Two drinks in a bar. Okay. Now, he made the touchdown. He made the touchdown. Now I don't we're. Know if that's what he said, but. Probably. He, he hit the cream cheese out of that one. That's all right. <laughs> I've got a new PlayStation 5, everybody. Um, and I downloaded an MLB game. Oh, yeah. The and, show? Yep. Yeah, and you hit the ball. Yep. And it's perfect. And they're like. Oh, he's hit that one, and I'm just like, he hit the cream cheese out of that one. That's what I say to myself when oh, yeah, yeah. I hit the shot, which doesn't happen often, to be honest. It doesn't happen often in baseball. But I'm, I'm be... leading my team in the home runs. Oh, okay. With five. Let's um, do the Archie Q. De Niro score for 84 Brady. Yes. A in the Archie Q. De Niro is for alcoholic, and we've already scored the cocktail a two out of five. Yeah, we have. It's... I finished it, but it's hanging around. It doesn't have good mouth feel. No, just like I feel like all I'm going to taste is grenadine for a little while. Oh, okay. Yeah. Until our next cocktail. Yeah. Maybe I should have had a cider to... As a rinse. palate cleanser. As a palate cleanser, <laughs> yeah. Um, but in the movie, Fonda has wine yep. every time they watch a game. Which, Yep, so that's a lot. And they go to the party. They go to the Some party. Fair bit of drinking at the party. There's also drugs. Oh, edibles. They're like they probably have a room of cocaine. <laughs> <laughs> I got drugged by a gummy bear. <laughs> and yeah, there's champagne at the party on all sorts of drinks. There's drinks in the skybox as well. Yep. I assume there's drinks in the rooms after they win. Yeah, we don't see it though. No. Which is weird. So it's probably only like a one and a half. I'd give it a two and a half. Okay. When they drink, they drink a bit. Yeah. Like there's right. a fair bit of alcohol at that party. All right. Two, two, five. Okay. 2.25. Because I don't know if it's... Because the drinking is not story or character based. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. Okay. Like getting high is... No one's an alcoholic. But we don't have D for drugs. No. Representation is the R in Archie. Um, you turned to me at one point and said, did all the black actresses die? I don't know <laughs> if that was in this movie or for the um, trailer for the book club. But it <laughs> applies it to both. both. <laughs> did all the old black actresses die, you said yeah. to me. Um, and the only person of colour of any note is... Uh, Grogu. Mickey. Yeah. The um, one that's oh. in love with Rita Moreno. And the security and guard. And reporter. And Chip. But none of the players that they talk to. Nope. Nobody in that box where they break into the coach's box or whatever. Nope. No one. Definitely no one in the sky box. No. Nah. So is it a oh, there was point a five? In the sky box. I reckon it's a point five because even like those two... Characters aren't really in it. Very minor. But like Rita Moreno's diversity. Anyway, let's us move on to cry. Yep. Yes. You cried. Five. Yep. Are you see, are you getting a five? You I didn't cried. cry, cry. I cried. Well, there was lots of moistening and there was some tears. Okay. Okay. When she had cancer at the start, 2001. Okay. I cried. Yep. When they won the tickets. Okay. When they are clearly best friends. <laughs> Because they're like, oh, we're best friends, let's hug and go to the Super Bowl together. I cried. Fuck it. Uh, when she spoke to Tom on the microphone, yep. obviously. Yep. Uh, when the Patriots won. Okay. That was proper tears. When they watched the game together at the end. Yep. Uh, and when she was not dead. Okay. And some other times, I'm sure. So I'm going to do a five. Oh, gosh. Okay, 4.5 then. There was definitely like teary uppy inspirational shit. Like when she's on the headset thing to him. And he's holding the helmet against his head. Yeah. Also, when they... Well, okay. 
I don't know if this is going to sound bad. When they did the flashback and she was like full getting chemo level of having cancer. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Right? I was like, oh, she looks really bad. Then I was like, did they just not put makeup on her? (laughs) Rather than put makeup on her to look bad, was it just like her with no makeup? All right. So 4.5 for the horny. You only cried a little bit. Or oh, just a little like bit. a little bit in the inspirational bit. And then at the end when you're like, oh, she's not dead. Oh, okay, good. Horniness is yes. the H of Archie. Jane yep. Fonda. Oi, vey. Is horny. She's horny. Like we said before, there, there's, old, for gronk. there's old lady horniness. Yeah. Oh, he's so handsome. It. He's so cute. The guy in his 30s is very confused that he's suddenly horny for Sally Field. Yeah, that was weird. Yeah. That's funny. Uh, and then... Gronk erotica. Gronk erotica. Yep. A, a, a gronk erotica? Gronk erotica. Gronk erotica. Gronk erotica. Nah, that nah, doesn't work. Not going to work. And then when she meets like Gronk, my that was Robin hilarious. Hood fan fiction's coming out soon. <laughs> <laughs> Shut up. I thought we were over that. Now, you brought it up last night at, at oh. dinner. So we are giving it what? It's a, it's a it's horny like a in a tame and a half? way. Yeah, it's Grunk very... Erotica gets a point and a bit on its own. It's very horny throughout the whole movie, but... It's not to a five level of horniness. No. I thought it was hilarious when it's like she published her Gronk Erotica. I thought it was just like she oh, wrote, she wrote it, it for it. just for them. Yeah, yeah. Um, but then when they got to the NFL experience and it was like fully published. Yeah, that was funny. Like, yeah, that's good. Okay, three and a half, I'm happy with Yeah. For horniness. Cool. Three and a half it is then. Okay. Uh, then it is insults. It's not very insulting movie. But there's like the... No. They occasionally kind of have a go at each other, friendly banter style. Yeah, and then just when um, they're doing the NFL experience. Oh, the throwing. The throwing. And Rita Marino's just giving that guy a Trash talking. And yeah. he's like, ma'am, excuse me, ma'am. Don't you have... Shouldn't you be having a nap? Um, other than that, it's a one for me. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Makes sense. Yeah. Yeah. This one we can score differently. Yeah. But it um, really is just. But a it one. is a one. Now enclosure. They each have different houses. Lily has a one-story little house. Yeah. Jane Fonda has an apartment. Yeah. Rita Moreno lives in essentially a hotel room in the retirement place, and Sally Field has a double-story house. But. They share a hotel room, four of them in I two beds. I say, yeah. <laughs> a two. I think it's a two. Yeah. Bang in the middle. Yep. Enclosure is a two. That's Archie done. Alcohol, representation, cry, horny, insults, and enclosure. Q, I don't think I'll quote it. It's new, so it's hard to know. No, and I think it's just not like groundbreaking. It's all just very like... Generic, inspirational. Yeah. We're all friends and we've had a good time. We don't actually need to go to the Super Bowl. It's just about us living a life. This is the best weekend I've ever had. Yada, yeah, let's yada. all just be happy and friends. I yeah. had, that's when I had a bit of a teary. Um, so it's a, probably a zero for quotability. Yeah. The only probably quotes that people will recognize are ones from the commentary of the Super Bowl. Which we don't because we're yeah. not football fans. That you know, bit with the game was funny was when they th- threw it, and he caught it. That's fucking stupid. And they caught it, and it was like this crazy catch. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And the guy was the guy that caught it. Was like, no, I caught it. He was like talking to the opposite. Yeah, yeah. Like, like, I know it doesn't I seem like it. it, but I actually I caught, caught it. it. Drink. I don't. I didn't see it, but I looked it up. Pepsi sponsored the Super Bowl. It is one hundred percent like it's a Pepsi movie. Yeah. I don't know if we saw Pepsi, but it's a Pepsi movie. Like, no, it's I, just well, American Pepsi. Pepsi sponsored the Super Bowl. Yep. So, it's A1, unfortunately. Yep. Endurance. I think it will be still watchable. I think that it will really help tell us the story of Tom Brady. I think Tom Brady, yeah, will really... Because he'll get forgotten. Elevate him now yeah. as a personality. Yeah, he'll get a Golden Globe nomination. They should have shit like best random sports star cameo. They probably win the fucking the like Oscars. MTV Movie oh, yeah. Awards or something. He'll win the Nickelodeon's like, Kids' Choice. Choice, choice, cameo in a movie. 
Or would it be like, you know, they have Nickelodeon's Kids' Choice. Will they have like the W Channel Retirees' Choice. And they have like... All the old ladies vote on movies like this. The ESPYs, like the Sports Awards. Yeah. They have like Best Crossover. And it's like a sports person that's done other shit. I think having such an iconic game in there as well... Yeah. ...will help its endurance. Yep. Yeah. It's a like, very iconic cast as well, so... Yeah. But, you know, for now, I don't know, maybe like... I'm thinking like a one and a half. Nah, I'm going to give it a three. Okay. And then in ten years, we'll come back and we'll check. Sure. In our two drink cinema 13-year reunion... Yep. No, when in 10 years when we do an anniversary movie, we'll do this again. Oh, not in 10 years when we do 90 for Brady. No. Oh, God. All right, nostalgia. When he's won two Oscars for his acting and... Yeah. He's made the move over, like, John Cena and Dwayne The Rock Johnson. God. Has anyone gone from, like... Don't at me, wrestling's not a sport. Has anyone gone from a sport to acting... Do you include Space Jam? <laughs> well, I would if it was acting. <laughs> Do you include both versions of Space Jam? <laughs> yeah, but like, you know, Dwayne The Rock Johnson, John Cena, they've come from wrestling, right? You can tell me wrestling's a sport, but it's a performance. No, it's an act. Yeah. And so they're acting as wrestlers and now they're acting on the screen. Has anyone gone from an actual sport, like, you know, football or darts, into acting? I don't think so. Like, I know Jimmy Not that I can... like, college football yeah, a little bit. Maybe Reagan did as well. Yeah. Not that I can really think of. I know Brett Lee, Australian fast bowler, did, like, Bollywood movies. Jesus. <laughs> but I think you need to broaden the term of acting uh, when you look at those ones. I can't think of anyone, but I feel like somebody would have. Do you count bodybuilding sure. as a sport? Yeah. yeah. You counted as acting. He's a good actor. He picked his niche. He went with it. Stallone did box. Okay. But I'm like level. And I don't mean like Mike Tyson in the hangover. You're saying like if Serena Williams now went into acting. Yeah. Something like that. Okay. Maybe not Serena Williams. Maybe Venus. Like I'll accept a Venus level of Okay. What about an Anna Kournikova level of success? <laughs> if there was ever any act tennis player that was going to become an actress. She was ranked pretty well. Yes, yeah, she was all right. I can't think of anyone that has gone on to have great success in acting after already having a successful sporting career. There's a few ex-football players that have to act interested in what BT is saying on the Channel 7 commentary. And there are some uh, soccer players that act like they've being kicked, but they haven't been touched. Okay. Let's move on. Nostalgia. Did it make you nostalgic for these ladies' peak performances? That was the only thing I could think of in terms of nostalgia. It, it made me want to watch Outrageous Fortune with Lily Tomlin again. What? Shelley Long and Bette Midler. What's Lily Tomlin? In oh, Big Story? Business. Sorry, oh, I meant Big Business. business. Um, no nostalgia for you? Mm-mm. No. I'm going to give it a point five because I watch it and go, oh, these ladies all could really act back in the day. <laughs> Which I know sounds very diminishing of their performance in this movie. I mean, they're all right now. They're very good now. Sally Field doesn't do bad things. I know yeah. some people on Google would disagree. And even average movies, she doesn't do badly. Yeah, like The Amazing Spider-Man. Yeah. I don't know, I haven't seen it. But acting in The Amazing Spider-Man is good. Like Sally Field and Andrew Garfield can act. And so can the, the, her, the Anne Hath, Emma Stone? Emma Stone, yes. Plays the girl. Mary Jane. She's an MJ. <gasps> what? Yeah, she's got another name. There's two kind of girls in Spider Man. Marijuana? No. T- um, Impact in the De Niro. Nope. I think the Impact is like you can cast old people as old people. I think there's some impact there. Okay. Maybe, hey, maybe Tom Brady will go on to have a huge acting career. Yeah, maybe. He could have. So that could be... That could be the impact. Some sort of impact at some point. Or could it create movies that connect to sporting events? That's not a new thing. No, but like... 
make more of them. What other so twenty twenty three is going to be the year of the biopic. Twenty twenty four is going to be the year of connecting sporting events. Yeah, it's going to be the year of the Stephen Bradbury story. Two guys that have gone to the football for twenty years together finally go and see Bulldogs Premiership. Something like that. You could write that. All right, I'll write that. Okay, it won't get picked up. I'll have to take as much artistic license in that story. Forty, as... forty for Boyd. <laughs> forty for Boydy. Forty for Boydy. <laughs> I'm going to pitch it. All right. Um, so I, I, think no, I think it's a, a one and a half of impact because it is being like- I'll give it a 0.5. Old ladies can still make movies. I'll give it for that and then because now you know who won the 2017 Super Bowl. That's true. I do know that. I would Even have guessed though if the Patriots. Somebody, if somebody asked me, if, if somebody came up to me and was like, who won the Super Bowl in this year? And it was any year between like- 2013 and 2023, I would guess the Patriots because I know they won a lot. Yes. It's just a numbers yeah. game. Yeah. It's like if anybody went, who won the who won the World Series in 1994, I would say the Yankees. It's probably wrong, but I feel like they were good then. They've always kind of been up there. That's why I would yeah. guess it. Or it's like saying who won the English Premier League in the 90s. Manchester, Manchester United. United. Yeah. It was like who won the... World Cup in blah, Brazil. I don't, you know. Who won the French Open in any of the last 30 years? Novak Djokovic. Yeah. It's like, no, it's like, who won the Oscar in this year? Fucking Meryl. What, why not? <laughs> <laughs> All right. Rewatchability. Yes. Yeah, I'd watch it again. If it came out on streaming in a few months and I was just scrolling through and yep. it was on Disney Plus on a Saturday night and I'm home alone. I'd watch it. We've already said we're watching it again in 10 years. Wouldn't be the first time I've been home alone on a Saturday night and I'm watching a fucking <laughs> Lily Tomlin movie. Oh, dear. Um, I'd, rewatchably, I'd give it like a... Two and a half for me. Yeah. Yeah, I, I'll give it the same. Okay. Um, overall... Giving it a one. Nah, chase. Three and a half... 375 for me overall. 375? Yeah, it's just a good, funny movie. And if you just want to watch a movie that's funny and you don't have to try and squeeze some kind of Chris Pratt action in there. I think it could have. I think it was good and it did what it was there and it's not meant to be anything serious or groundbreaking. Yep. Tom Brady was surprisingly good in the locker room. Yeah, he was. Right? Um. But there was a little bit where Rita Marino just felt like a fourth wheel. I don't know if that's a phrase because it has four wheels. <laughs> Something's meant to have four wheels. Yeah. Do you think this movie was originally like written a as a tricycle? A tricycle. <laughs> the yeah. movie was written as a tricycle and Rita Moreno is the fourth wheel. The fourth wheel of that other car from Mr. Bean. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. His you nemesis. know what I mean? Like she was just like there. She was a bit of an extra. But in terms of like the story and major plot points within it. She, hers wasn't really... I do feel like the, there was definitely more connection between Lily Tomlin and Jane Fonda than between the others. Mm-hmm. Like it was Lily Tomlin and Jane Fonda are friends and then Sally Field became friends with them and then Rita Moreno became friends with them. Yeah. I also didn't quite understand that you have a house of your own while you're living in a... like a old folks home. Yeah, so the husband could... She could still think of the husband because he liked it. Oh, that's true. I'll give it a... But also, why were they both living in the retirement village if they had a house? Yeah, I don't know. Hmm. I'm going to give it a two and a half. Oh, okay. Yeah. Did I already give it? You said a 3.75. Yeah, I liked it. I laughed a lot. All right. Which you're meant to do in comedies. So, what is the score on the Archie Q De Niro scale... For 84 Brady. So overall, it has a total of 36. Oh, okay. I expect it to be higher. Which is the same as Adventures of Robin Hood. The Errol Flynn. And it, it is just below The Ring. <laughs> and then just a little bit above... What does that say? Tar? Tar. <laughs> can't read it. Oh, yeah, I changed the font so it looks better on Instagram. But it's a better movie than Groundhog Day, so I'm happy. Yeah. I thought it would get better than 36. No, 36. No nostalgia. No, no nostalgia. No, no impact. impact. Yeah, yeah, okay. You were harsh. 
overall. Oh, Jesus. <laughs> All right. Fuck. All right. Um, we won't do a trivia for what's on next week because that trivia was at the end of last week's Roger Rabbit episode. We've just stuck this okay. one in As the middle. Newbie. Okay. Um, so next week we are doing a different movie. Thank you, Brett. <laughs> We're not doing 80 for Brady again? No. Oh. And we're not doing a new movie. This one is a few years old. 15. Is it? Wow. Mm. Thanks for listening to another episode of Two Drink Cinema. Make sure you've hit subscribe on your platforms. Join our Facebook group. Thank you, Brett. Thanks, Lee. Thanks for listening to this episode of Two Drink Cinema. Make sure you've subscribed so you don't miss any future episodes. Please share this episode with a friend and leave a rating and review. It goes a long way to help us reach a bigger audience. This show is produced by Two Brothers Entertainment on the lands of the Wurundjeri people of the Kulin Nation, and we pay our respects and acknowledge their elders past, present and emerging. Follow us on all your social platforms and join our Facebook group to connect with us. Thanks for listening, happy watching, and please drink responsibly. <laughs>